What are some of the, like, for you, the most fascinating topics in this book? Well, we used to consider invisibility impossible. I teach optics, and mm -hmm. I would tell my students that invisibility violates all the laws of optics. Every optics textbook in the world says the same thing. And two years ago, I was proven wrong. Every textbook is wrong. Think of wow. a boulder in a river. Mm -hmm. We know that water can wrap around a boulder and reform. So if you're downstream of a boulder, you have no inkling that there's a boulder upstream. Right. But light cannot do that, or so we thought. We okay. said the light cannot wrap around an object, so invisibility is impossible. Two years ago at Duke mm -hmm. University, they did it. Right. They did the impossible. They got an object like this, sh shown microwave radiation around it, and proved that microwave radiation wrapped around this object as if it was not there at all. And a few months ago at Caltech and yeah. in Germany, they showed that at a microscopic level, red light and green light can also bend in a way that was considered impossible. Which means that within 10 years, we will make an object disappear under, let's say, red light. Mm -hmm. After that, the three primary colors. And after that, Harry Potter, watch out. With his cloak of invisibility. Yeah, that <laughs> could be coming very soon. So I'm going to get a little more conceptual with that idea. Um, objects themselves, we use the bending of light to be able to um, guess, to gauge distance between ourselves and far off galaxies, um, between ourselves and other stars, to be able to determine, um, you know, you see light in the night sky and we use the bending of light, the red shift of light as it passes around objects and is bent by the gravitational field of those objects. Um, are these objects that a, uh, you know, a, a cloak of invisibility would cover, do they not have a large enough gravitational field that it would affect the bending of the light well, as it passes, or is it? These are called Einstein lenses. Okay. Uh, if you have a galaxy, light will actually go around the galaxy mm -hmm. and be distorted, giving you a ring pattern, which we can actually measure. Right. And that's how with the Hubble Space Telescope, we can actually detect the presence of dark matter. Dark okay. matter is invisible. If I had it in my hand, it would be totally invisible. But we see it because light bends when it goes through dark matter. Mm -hmm. Now, ordinary matter, you can't do that. Ordinary right. matter will not bend light in that way. Okay. How does it work? A metamaterial has tiny impurities in it. And these metamaterials we thought were impossible to construct. But now mm -hmm. we're making them every day. Yeah. Tiny little impurities, as light or microwaves goes through the material, it kicks. It mm -hmm. kicks the microwave beam in a way once thought to be impossible, and that's why it can wrap around objects. So, guess who's funding this research? The Pentagon. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing Department of... <laughs> the they're not stupid. Uh, they spent millions building yeah. stealth bombers and stealth fighters, mm -hmm. which are not really invisible. Uh, right. Under radar, they appear as like a large bird. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking real invisibility. Now, to be fair, there mm -hmm. are countermeasures you can also have. Such as? If I have the Invisible Man, I can throw sand in the air, mm -hmm. and the sand will then trace out the outline of the Invisible Man. Or mm -hmm. I can put a bed sheet right. and then trace out the outlines of the Invisible Man. <laughs> so the Pentagon has to realize that, yes, yes, they're spending a lot of money on invisibility, mm -hmm. but there are countermeasures you can take against the Invisible Man.